Welcome back to Mountain Murders. I'm Heather. And I'm Dylan. And this is a very special, spooky Halloween edition of Mountain Murders. Ooh. Hey, it'd be like gay ghosts everywhere. It'd be like, boo. <laughs> boo. No, we're, we're going to be scarier than that, guys. Okay, well, we love Halloween. I know I love Halloween. Every yeah. day of my life is Halloween. It is. She'll be like, uh, this time of year, she'll be in the store shopping like, ooh, that will go great in the kitchen. And I know that she means like, that's going to stay there. Yeah, she or puts it. that random people at gas stations ask me if I'm going to a costume party or a Halloween party when it's in July. Yeah, <laughs> right. And I'm like, no, sir, this is just how I look. Like we know any rich people throwing <laughs> costume parties like that in the middle of the damn year. So we love Halloween and horror. So why not kick off the creepy season with a great horror story? Yes. A very, or horror stories. Yes. Spooky stories from our family, from our listeners. It's our listener family. Yes. Our Mountain Murders family. Yes. Yeah. So we ask you guys to send us your creepy, scary, spooky, frightening stories. And we got some good stuff here, Dylan. I'm ready for this. Are you ready for this? Yeah. I was uh, thinking of them like creepy pastas, but these are real stories. These are not fictional accounts. Real quick, I want to give a thanks to those who bought our Mountain Murders t-shirts from the Bonfire campaign. Your t-shirt not only, of course, supports Mountain Murders, proceeds come back to us so that we can keep the podcast up and running, but you're also supporting the podcast by wearing a shirt, which is, of course, going to be a conversational piece. Everyone's going to want to know, what is Mountain Murders? And then you can tell all your friends about it. Yeah, you can fill in the blanks for them, and uh, that was a limited run, so if you got one of those dope shirts, you're in a very elite class, if you will. It's true. It was a limited edition t-shirt. Yes. We may have those available again. Maybe not. Maybe not. And if you bring it by here at Hazelwood, North Carolina, I'll sign it, Ooh. and it's going to be super not valuable. We have been watching a lot of horror movies. Oh, my God. It's normal we do that anyway, but especially this time of year. It seems like we've been watching at least a horror movie a day. Yes, Sometimes we've watched a bunch. doubling up. Yes, and what I've uh, enjoyed about that is I've got you to watch some of the goofier ones that I can't get you to watch sometimes. Yeah. Classics like Attack of the Killer Donuts. We did watch that. I was surprised to see C. Thomas Howell. Hey. You Pony give, Boy. You give him 10 or 15 grand, he'll pop in for a day or two. Stay gold, Pony Boy. I know. So he was a cop in Attack of the Killer Donuts. It was a great cheesy movie. It was pretty awesome. The donuts had scary little teeth. And they were like, nah, 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 nah. yeah. And then in several scenes, it appeared that someone off camera was just throwing donuts <laughs> at actors. throwing the donuts so at So if them. you're looking for a great, ridiculous film, Attack of the Killer Donuts, perfect. Incredible. So we had another one along those lines. The Ice Cream Man. Oh, that's a classic. We actually bought this film. We got a DVD. It was like a what was it, five for ten dollar deal? Yeah. At this little indie video store in Asheville. We got some great ones that day. Oh yeah. So we bought some really shitty movies, but the ice cream man was great. It was. It's it a... was so bad, it was good. It was pretty awesome. <laughs> the Furies, another film you found for us. And I just have to say it wasn't overall a great movie, but one of the best kill scenes in a while. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, like you said, it wasn't this incredible movie that you're just in awe of, which most horror movies aren't. But I will say the the kill scenes in that, um, one in particular with an axe to the face. You know, kill scenes are typically you know quick. Boom, they're stabbed, their heads cut off, whatever, blood splatters. This is extended over three to four minutes. It's pretty gory. So if you it like. It was fucking great. <laughs> yeah. So if you like, uh, we had the goofy on the one side. If you like the more, uh, you kind of have to look away, cringe worthy stuff, then the furies is where you need to go for that. Well, speaking of cringe worthy, and I might get some hell for this comment, but we, <laughs> no pun intended, we watched Rob Zombie's Three from Hell. Horrible. And oh not in a good way. I don't know what the fuck he was thinking. I'm sorry, but that movie was a steaming pile 
of dog shit. It doesn't even deserve to be in the same category as House of a Thousand Corpses. And, or the Devil's Rejects. Or the Devil's Rejects. It was terrible. It's not the same conversation. Not at all. Nobody's heart was in it. The actors and actresses. Rob. And I fucking love Bill Mosley. I And love I was them. just like, what is this? It's too much dialogue. It's, uh, th- they're just acting like they shouldn't act. It's not in their character that's been built up all these years. Yeah, it just wasn't true to the characters. So, at all. yeah, if you hadn't seen it yet and you're a fan of the other two, likely going to be disappointed. The other film we watched, Child's Play, then Remake. Uh, uh, no, we didn't like that either. Oh, but I will say the kills were incredible. Yeah, there were pretty, pretty good kills in that. A few, few good ones. Yeah, the kills in Child's Play could have been better than some of the kills in uh, the the crappy three. And so here we are, giving negative reviews, and we were just kind of poking fun at people who give negative reviews because I made Dylan watch Hocus Pocus for the first time. I acted reluctant, but I really wanted to watch it again. It's funny. Oh, it's hilarious. I love it. Pocus Pocus, great movie, family-friendly movie, of course, fucking funny, I love it, it's great. And then I noticed it had like a 33% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm just like, who takes the time to review a movie on a website? Yeah, let alone, well, I can see if you love something, I mean, seeking it out. I mean, we're reviewing movies here on our podcast, but I'm not taking the time, actively taking the time out of my day to type up some big review and rate a children's movie... On a fucking website. Yeah, from the 90s. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, this film from 1993 does not meet expectations. I mean, I just don't understand. Oh, the, the <laughs> script was very thin and it was not, the characters were not developed enough. Yes, I, I don't like Bette Midler's hair in the movie. I mean, seriously, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, get a freaking laugh. <laughs> Okay, I feel like this is a sufficient amount of bullshitting. Yes, don't, uh, don't turn me into not a fan. The bullshit police might be out in full force and ready to review us on a website with a negative review. So I guess it's time to get into the meat of the podcast. Yes, please do it while I'm slaying them with some scary stories. Yes, let's do that. Now, Dylan, you're going to kick us off. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Because we have some incredible stories. Are you ready? I think I am. This story comes from one of our Mountain Murders fans, Elizabeth. Yes, Elizabeth sent us a great little story. So go ahead and tell Elizabeth's story. Okay, so we lived in a house that had served as the hospital for our coal camp. When I was 14 months old, Mom said I was taking a nap, but she heard me talking to someone, so she came to check, and I told her I was talking to the woman on the ceiling. Ooh, that's Mm. creepy. Flash forward to when I was four, my aunt and I were sleeping in the same room, and we both saw a woman sitting in a rocking chair by the bed, and she was grooming herself in a handheld mirror. Auntie screamed, and Dad came running and turned the light on, and the woman disappeared. Oh. (laughs) That would freaking freak me out. Yeah. Ever since I was a child, I've had the ability to see spirits. My son sees them, too. When he was about 18 months, I had had a miscarriage two months prior, and he kept saying, Come on, sissy Kate, let's go play. He never knew that her name would have been Caitlin. And I asked him who he was talking to, and he told me he was talking to his sister. Oh. Wow, that would... that At the same time, it would creep me out and tug at my heart, you know, right? Yeah. Yeah. He also saw my grandmother who died when he was three weeks old, and he knew her name, too. My grandmother appeared in my back seat once, eight months after she died, to warn me of an impending wreck, and if she hadn't, I would have been killed as I was hit head-on by a drunk driver. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Wow. Are you kidding me? Well, I'm glad I'm not the only person who sees spirits. You know, when you tell people that, like, hey, I'm very sensitive, or I have this gift or a curse, I guess, however you want to see it. Right. People think you're nuts. They do. So I'm really glad that there are people out there who can relate and who also share those experiences. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing your um, rather creepy experience with us because... uh, Can you imagine just like 
watching some lady groom herself in a chair next to your bed? No. Or could you imagine your kid talking about they're talking to the lady on the ceiling? Yeah, that's uh -uh. freaky, right? No, I would retire back to the living room with my stiff drink. I have a great story. I think it's pretty creepy. It comes from my best friend, Julie. Okay. She's been my best friend for like 25 years. Yeah, y'all are pretty tight. Yeah, since high school, we roomed together in college. Like, we're tight, right? So I told her that we were going to do this great Halloween episode. And I said, hey, you know, because we both love spooky things. Do you have any great scary stories or creepy stories, anything like that? She was like, oh, you know, not really, because I'm usually the one that has the weird experiences. Right. She's just along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> But later, she emails me this story from her grandmother. And so, growing up, I knew Julie's memo. Her name was Memo Venus. Wow. And Memo Venus was a very colorful character, and she had a lot of stories. And she grew up over in a little tiny area. I believe it was called Japan, North Carolina. It is what is now Lake Fontana. Okay. Or Fontana Lake. And so, for those of you who may not be familiar during the 40s and 50s, um, after the New Deal came to be, Roosevelt was trying to, you know, bolster the economy. They were trying to get more indoor plumbing and water and that kind of thing to the Appalachian region. So they developed the TVA, the Tennessee Valley Authority. And so they created some of these, like, lakes right. in order to have the electricity so, basically, the people didn't have a choice in this, right? Once they decided to flood an area? Right. So, what they did is they came into some of these towns, and they were like, hey, we're going to buy your property, and this is what we're willing to offer you. And so, either you, A, agreed and took the money and left, or B, they took the land and your house, and you were fucked. Right. So, it was like, you know, all these people were moving out of the area. They built this lake. They flooded the whole area, and now we've got Fontana Lake. Julie's grandmother grew up where Fontana Lake is now. Okay. So she's one of the families that had to, like, move out of that area when they flooded it. All right. Memo Venus used to tell Julie the story from when her memo was a teenager. Venus said that she had a cousin who would stop by her house every morning for breakfast, and he would always tell stories about how his house was being haunted. He lived in a house with his mom and his two sisters. Well, of course, no one in the family believed him, and one day he told Venus that she should come up there and stay the night, and she could see for herself. She went to stay, and she slept in a bedroom with her aunt and her two female cousins. In the middle of the night, they started hearing knocks and weird noises throughout the house. She said then after a while, they started hearing a buzzing noise that started pretty low and then kept getting louder and louder and louder. And this is so creepy. At one point, the blanket on the bed she was sharing with her cousin lifted up in the air and started, like, basically levitating above uh -uh. them. Nah. She started screaming. She said suddenly the clock in the living room struck the hour. The buzzing stopped. The blanket fell back on top of them. And apparently stuff like this happened all the time. Oh, my gosh. So years later, when Fontana Lake's being created or whatever... The house was torn down, and they found bones, like, buried underneath the house. Really? Mamal Venus thought they could have possibly been Native American bones, because they were obviously very old. Right. And it is very close to the um, Eastern Band of Cherokee, the Cherokee Reservation. So, potentially, it could have been something like that. Or who knows? Maybe someone murdered somebody and shoved their body under the house. Well, who, who does know? Because you would think if it's anything related to the family or the you know home being built there, that they would know of it or heard stories, right? Right. So maybe that's why she thought it might have even predated like the construction of the house. Well, it's probably a good thing they didn't dig a swimming pool. That would super freak me out to think of a blanket like levitating and then just dropping back on top of me. Yeah, that's not going to work for me because no. I would be. Losing my shit. I'm not even yeah. kidding. I'm not even kidding. You have another story for us, right? Yes, I do. And um, I will make people suffer through this rendition <laughs> of it. <laughs> okay, this comes from Melissa. Ooh, okay. Thank, thank you, Melissa. Hi, Melissa. So a few years back, a few friends of mine from work decided to go ghost hunting. 
We drove up to a cemetery. I think it was on Jay Creek in Waynesville, North Carolina. That's ga- Jonathan Creek, right? Jonathan Creek. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. Jonathan Creek. We gathered around in a circle. It was probably around midnight. Oh, my friend started speaking and asking if any spirit want any spirit wanted to let us know that they were there to show us. 